another day, another controller. And nothing better than an open box controller to check out, so let's check this one out. Hey everybody, it's Chris from Family Geekery, and today I've got this Bionic Vulcan Advanced Multi-Platform Wireless Controller that I found at my local Micro Center. And you can see the normal price up there, $49.99. And you can see I got it for $22.96. So at that price, after reading the box and reading what it's supposed to do, I thought it was worth the gamble to uh, try $22 at it. Now you could normally find a cheap controller on Amazon for around that same price, brand new. But I'm hoping that this one is a little bit better than the average cheap one. And it's got some features that I'm pretty excited about. So let's go ahead and see what this thing has. So right off the bat, I think this has been sitting at the Micro Center for a while. Something small like this can sit on the shelf and nobody will see it for a while. You can see that it's got a couple stickers on it, a couple layers of stickers, so it probably got marked down a couple times. Yeah, the original date of the sticker shows on here in August. And then this latest price was in October. I picked it up in November. So this is probably the bottom, bottom price on it. But for less than half off, we're going to see if it's if it's worth anything. So kind of hard to see what it is with the stickers all over it. Let's take a look at the rest of the box. On the back here it has a couple couple descriptions. It says on the fly programming paddles for custom button mapping. No app required. That's that's one feature that I liked and we'll, we'll look, at, look at that and see what it means. 30 foot range for Bluetooth and 2.4 gigahertz. So that means it's going to be a Bluetooth controller and a 2.4 which is, means it's going to have a dongle of some sort to plug into a computer. Support Steam, which I guess means PC, VR, Android, and Windows PC platforms. And then uh, in pairs, it includes three pairs of joystick caps, concave, convex, and tall convex. So we'll look at that. You can change out the, uh, the, the controller tops. So we'll see what that means. So let's uh, keep looking at this. There's a flap in the front here. It's got some more features listed in here. So on the left side here, assign additional paddle buttons on the fly. So you can see you got a bunch of switches there in the bottom of the controller. And uh, you can assign all of these paddles without using an app or software or reprogramming it. That's nice. A master switch here that's pointing at to activate or deactivate. So you can turn all those paddles off so they don't do anything, which is nice. Sometimes you don't want to accidentally push a button. Some games, they work perfect. Some games, you don't want any extra buttons. So you can turn them off completely. And again, without using any kind of software. And then down here, it says for PC, Android, and set-top boxes that support game controllers. So basically anything that uses Bluetooth or uses a, uh, a USB receiver that hopefully will be included with it. And then down at the bottom there, it says programmable paddles. So we know about that. Uh, let's see here. It says on the bottom, over 30 hours of gameplay on two AA batteries. So two AA batteries, that's a that's a plus and a minus in my book. It's nice to have a built-in rechargeable battery pack in there, but it's also nice to be able to just change them out when you need to. So that, that's kind of a wash for me. And it says includes the Vulcan controller, wireless dongle, three sets of joystick caps, USB cable, quick start guide, and user guide. Let's continue over on this side over here. Rubberized texture for better grip. So we got three sets of joy caps. We talked about that, concave, convex, and then tall convex. You can play wired and you using the included cable, so that's nice. I like that it gives you the option of Bluetooth and 2.4, but I like even more that it gives you the option of using the 2.4 and just a straight up wired connection. So if you're sitting right at your computer or sitting right next to your laptop, Go ahead and just plug this thing in. Take all the latency out of it. Take all the wireless aspect out of it. And, uh, and that's perfect. If you're sitting across the room, obviously playing with like a set-top game box, then the wireless makes a lot more sense. And then it says it's got a circular direction directional pad. So that's going to be a, a matter of preference. Do you like the up, down, left, right? You know, the, the plus sign, you know, the traditional directional pad. Or do you like the circular one? It says great for fighting games. If I'm super worried about playing fighting games, I'm going to be playing it with a arcade-style joystick. So it's going to be kind of a, uh, 
a preference really if you like this style or the other style. So let's see what else we got. Let's open it up and, and take a look inside. So anytime you're looking at something that's open box and you can see it's been taped shut, uh, you do want to make sure that if, if you can while you're still in the store, whether you do it yourself or you bring it to an associate and have them help you, do make sure that you open it up and see that it's got everything that it, it's supposed to have. In this case, the sticker did say complete. So it says right here at the bottom, complete. Sometimes it'll say missing accessories or something. Maybe it's missing the cable. Maybe it's missing the batteries that it came with. But this one said complete. So I did, in fact, open it up. The tape wasn't taped all the way shut. So I just opened it up to make sure it had everything in it. So I wouldn't have wasted the money and driven home if it didn't. So let's take a look at, at what's inside. We got our quick start guide. Hopefully we don't need that, but we'll keep it to the side if we need it. Here's the included cable. And this is actually pretty nice. It's got a, uh, it's got a keeper on it and a little Velcro keeper to keep it nice and coiled up. And it is a braided cable. And the end here for the USB uh, micro, which is a negative in my, my book, but this is a, probably an older model. It's nice and molded at least. I wish it was a USB-C, but you can't have everything. But at least it's nice and molded, and it's got the name Bionic on it. So if this is sitting in, in a, a pile of a thousand of my cables, I know that if I grab this one, that this end here is going to fit into here. Sometimes they recess, like on the Xbox controllers, they'll recess the cable opening, and only certain cables will fit in there. So at least I know by picking this up and seeing the name on it, what this goes to. So that's, that's a pretty nice cable, reinforced on both sides, labeled on both sides. So we'll test that out. Here's the controller itself. It's got a good hefty solid feel to it. We'll take a look at that more in depth in a second. And then down at the bottom here you can see all the extra uh, joystick toppers. So those extra joystick toppers would, and yeah, they just screw on and screw off. So you just snug them down, the ones that you want. I'm going to keep these con, uh, concave ones here. Because that's the kind that I prefer. So we'll keep those on there. And then there was also a full user guide. Which looks pretty thick. But really it's only about two pages long. Because it's in 17 different languages. So we'll, we'll keep that to the side too. So let's take a, a closer look at the controller itself. So here we go, here is the Bionic Vulcan, and it's clearly labeled Bionic at the top, but I'm not seeing any kind of labeling on the top or bottom that says Vulcan. So I'll just take their word for it that it is, that's what the package said. And I did already open it up, and there's a compartment there for two double A's, and then a slot right here to hold your 2.4 gigahertz receiver. So that's nice that they give you a little slot there. As long as you're smart enough to remember to always take it out of whatever you're using and putting it back in here when you travel. But for now, we've got the uh, the dongle. We haven't lost it yet. That's a good thing. And underneath here, while we're here, you can see that clearly labeled Android versus PC. So that's going to select between activating the Bluetooth or activating the 2.4 gigahertz, which is nice. We can see underneath here, we got two buttons there and two of these paddles underneath here and those are all going to be selected by using this whole set setup right here so you can see L4 and L5 R4 and R5 and then all the options that you can pick for them and then right in the middle that master switch zero being off one being on so no matter what they're set to if you have that in the zero position these buttons will not do anything whether you want them to or not sometimes you do want them to and you forget to turn it on sometimes you just don't so maybe you're playing some retro games or something and you just need up down left right a and b you don't want to accidentally grab onto something and jump when you're not supposed to jump or shoot when you're not supposed to shoot so just turn all those off completely but that is probably the nicest feature of this i'm kind of an old school player that hasn't gotten into using these yet but i have found a couple games that they are useful um, and it is nice to be able to assign them on the fly. So you don't even have to stop the game or anything. You can just move the switch 
and and change what those buttons are going to do for you. So looking at the top here, we've got a back button, a start button, and then the home button in the middle, which is also going to be our pair button for for you um, Bluetooth. We've got these two good size joysticks, and they feel pretty sturdy. They're not flimsy. They don't feel like they they click around or catch on anything. We've got the circular joy pad here, which has a little bit of an eight directional feel to it as you spin it around. But if you are like die hard, just want that plus sign, then that would be a, a downside. They give you a replacement tops here. They should have just given you a replacement deal here, but I guess you can't have everything. And then the A, B, X, Y, those are pretty, pretty standard. So we got back here, not a charging port because these aren't rechargeable battery pack inside there, but it is just simply a connection point to give you a USB connection. So we'll test that out. So let's go ahead and get a couple things set up. I got a computer I'm gonna load up a game on. I'm gonna try both the 2.4 and the direct wired connection. And then I've got an iPad or a, an Android tablet that I've got set up to test the Bluetooth side. So let's, let's test out some gameplay. All right, so starting off with just a controller directly wired right into a PC. And here I've got this Matebook, uh, Huawei Matebook that I reviewed uh, last week on this channel. And one thing I said I, I loved about it is that it's got a full-size USB port over here. So I'm just going to take this controller with the included cable and the full USB side over here. And let's plug it into the computer. And right away Windows has found this controller, Bionic Vulcan controller. So it recognized it right away. And you can see it sees both analog joysticks point of view hat or the obviously the little controller there and then all of our buttons so that is good to go so let's go ahead and launch a game and see how it works all right so here we go on this laptop here I've got Saints Row 3 playing on it and I'm directly wired in and no surprises it works as expected a B X Y all do what they're supposed to do my uh, shoulder buttons work just fine. Oops, wasn't supposed to do that. <laughs> and let's test out the joysticks. See how well I can steer. And obviously no latency at all because I'm using just a wire straight into the USB port. So everything is good to go on that. And the controller feels good in my hand. It's not super rubberized, but it is uh, textured at least. And it's comfortable as far as like ergonomics go. Um, I do feel underneath there where the, the paddles, the R4 and R5 are. They're very accessible. I'm guessing the, uh, the 4 on both sides would be, looks like my, uh, my middle finger would be right on there because my... My, my pointer finger is more on the uh, the triggers and then either my pinky finger or ring finger on either side would be able to hit those paddles uh, the R5 and, and um, L5 so I'm gonna go ahead and switch and take the um, I guess the R2 which is my accelerator button here and I'm going to set that right paddle and I'm going to darken the room so I can't see. But there we go. So now the right paddle, uh, just as my car is about to explode. Let's find us another, another donor vehicle. Maybe something a little bit peppier. You, sir. Oh, you don't want to donate your car to me. Someone's shooting at me. So now let's try out this paddle button to see how it works. See, I've got my R5 set to what would be the R2. And it works just fine. This is not something that I would want to do. I think those paddles would be more for like a shooting game for maybe aiming and stuff. 
So I'm just going to go back and check to make sure that yes, R2 still works at the same time. So it doesn't override it, it just adds to it. And then if I set that switch off again, so I've just switched the switch off, and now all those paddles do nothing. So everything works as expected. So let's go ahead and switch out this uh, wired controller for the wireless dongle and see if everything works just as nicely. All right, so before I turn off the lights to cut down the glare a little bit, you can see now I've unplugged the cable. I've plugged in the dongle here. And since I unplugged the cable, it obviously had no power going to it. So I just press the home button. It says press the home button for about four seconds and it will pair up with the device. In this case, it's, it's turned orange, which means it's paired to a 2.4. That's in the instructions. And yes, I read a little bit of the instructions. So the orange means that it's paired to this 2.4 controller. I didn't even get out of the game and everything is fine. So let's go ahead and turn these studio lights back off. Cut down that glare a little bit. And let's test out to see how the controller works. Obviously, I think all the buttons are gonna work exactly the same. Yep, there's that grenade again. And, oh, there's a vehicle right here I can take. And if there's any lag at all, I haven't noticed it yet. So maybe, <clears throat> maybe once I start driving a little bit, if I can even get out of the parking lot. This was not the ideal place to put a vehicle. I guess this was not the ideal place to steal a vehicle. All right, let's find something different. And <laughs> not that one. There's my run button. That's what I was looking for. Let's find us. Nope, nothing big. There we go. Let's test out the response. Hey, come back here. You were going to let me test out your bike, weren't you? It's not a very polite way of asking to borrow a vehicle. Alright, so now we want to test the responsiveness of this 2.4. And I think, generally speaking, a good 2.4 gigahertz connection is going to be better or less latency than a Bluetooth connection. So right now, I can tell you that I wouldn't even know I was on wireless. It feels just as much of a uh, playable connection as the, the wired connection did. So, so far, PC gaming with this, I'm going to say is good to go. Still comfortable in the hands. Those uh, buttons don't get in the way underneath if you're not using them. And... Yep, very good. So let's go ahead and switch gears and activate the Bluetooth on this bad boy and hook it up to something that I can play Bluetooth with. Alright, so since this computer actually has Bluetooth built into it, I just went ahead and tested it out to see that the manual only talked about Android working Bluetooth. And I wasn't sure if it was just a an Android thing or if it was just a generic Bluetooth thing. But I did just switch... The setting back here to the Android mode which as soon as I switched it the blue light started blinking fast now if I hadn't already had this powered on I would have had to press and hold this home button for four seconds and that would have put it into pairing mode but it put it into pairing mode right away so I just went into Windows and the Bluetooth devices I clicked the plus sign here it found it and you can see bionic Vulcan controller and then under the game controllers it sees it as a Bluetooth gamepad so if we go into the properties there, you can see the X, Y axis on the left, the Z axis on the right, all of my buttons, kind of hard to see on there, but they are lighting up. 
and then my point of view hat. So everything is working. So let's go right back into that game and see how it feels. All right, so we're back into the game and we're using now the Bluetooth connection. And the first thing I notice, despite the controller being seen in Windows correctly, this is actually the, the left stick is inverted. And I'm not sure why. And the right stick is fine far as right and left goes actually it's just the X Y or the uh, the Y is inverted actually in both of the sticks so that could be just a uh, obviously I can probably change that in the settings but I don't want to because it was working completely fine with the USB connection and with the 2.4 connection so it must be just a Bluetooth uh, anomaly and the other thing is is the buttons the a B and X and Y don't do what they're supposed to do so so they're not set up right either so I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here and I'm gonna load up that Android tablet and see if I see the same thing happening on there or if the Android tablet works perfectly so so let me switch devices and I'll be right back all right so here we are we are hooked up solid blue light there Android switch is selected to Android and I'm hooked into the Samsung Tab 7 FE and just like everything else Bluetooth wise there was some uh, getting used to to hooking it up you go into your Bluetooth connections you pair it it worked fine it says that the next time that you turn on the tablet you'll just have to tap the home button and not do the long press and it noticed that it was there but it didn't pair right away so I had to do you know, turn off Bluetooth, turn on Bluetooth, and then it paired fine. So some of the complications that you see with every Bluetooth connection, I saw the same thing with this, which is why I prefer either that 2.4 or that direct connection in. But we got it all set up. So now let's see. Oops, did you want to get in? <laughs> I don't know why. But now we've got it all set up. This is just GTA 3 running on an Android tablet and it plays very smooth of course this is an older game so the controllers aren't as crisp um, but but it's working the way that it should definitely a lot better than trying to use the on-screen controls of of controlling this type of game so latency wise you can tell a little bit but it's it's not uh, game breaking at all in this case if you had a game that you needed very precise movement and aiming and shooting, um, then maybe that would be a, an issue. But this already has somewhat sloppy controls anyways, so it's working just fine as a controller. It's actually quite enjoyable to go back and play an old classic like this GTA 3 on an Android. As a young kid, if I, if I ever thought that I could take Grand Theft Auto with me everywhere I went, that would be mind-blowing to me instead of hooking it up on the PlayStation 2 onto my old TV. But this is, uh, this is a nice experience. And having a controller like this just adds to that experience. So I'm quite happy with, with the Bluetooth connection. Other than having to set it up a couple times, we got it working. And it's working fine. So let's get out of this game and let's uh, look at some final thoughts on this controller. And as I was getting out of the game, I thought this was pretty interesting. So if this is the, obviously the pause menu, if I use the left stick, then it goes along the, the choices kind of as expected. But if I use the D-pad, it just goes straight to them without the, uh, without the animated scroll effect. So that's, that's weird and interesting at the same time, but, but really it's not super important. So, sorry for wasting your time. Let's get to those final thoughts. So, this Bionic Vulcan multi-purpose gamepad, what they what they call it on the on the package here? They call it an advanced multi-platform wireless controller. It did everything it it advertised it could do. Um, we tested it out with just a direct wired connection, direct USB right into a PC. We tested it out with the uh, included 2.4 gigahertz dongle and we tested it out straight up bluetooth 
and everything worked as expected. I did in the meantime test this with an iOS device. I tried with an iPad uh, with, a, with a Bluetooth connection and it, it did not work. Um, I know that, that iPadOS has added some controller support for different types of controllers. Maybe this one's just a little bit too old for that. Maybe it needs a firmware update. I'm not exactly sure why. Maybe I just did it wrong. If, if you had different resu results, go ahead and tell me in those comments below. But in my quick testing, it did not work. Um, but of course, it doesn't advertise anything on there on any of the packaging or instructions about iOS devices. So, so I'm not too concerned about that. I've got PlayStation 4 controllers and I've got some, some 8-bit do controllers for that. So uh, for the testing that we did do, everything worked as expected. We had a little bit of weird complications with the Bluetooth going straight to the computer where the, uh, the Y-axis was inverted and the buttons weren't exactly mapped correctly. But that may be just uh, an issue with the game itself. Maybe I could go in and, into the settings of the game and, and change that. I wasn't too concerned with that. Once we plugged this right or connected it right to that Android tablet, it worked absolutely perfectly. So that was fine. These controllers here, these, these extra paddles, they worked as expected. And they were very easy to flip. Even without uh, having my lights on, I was able to ch make the change up to the connections and change the mappings of the buttons. So that was nice. I put some questionable uh, AA batteries in here and I wasn't sure if they were going to last the whole test and they did so uh, so I'm happy with the, the battery it didn't it didn't kill them right away even after going through several different pairing options so they still seem to be working good will it get 30 hours um, on on these Best Buy brand ones maybe they will maybe they won't I'm not sure um, but if you're gonna have a controller like this it's probably best to have some rechargeable just get some cheap rechargeable AA batteries on Amazon and just swap them out whenever you need to. That way you're not always tossing away uh, batteries and you're not running out of battery juice when you need it the most. So overall, I think this is a, a very nice controller. It felt good in the hands, it controlled nicely. It's got a lot of different features. It is truly multi-platform. And for the price that I got it at the 22 bucks, then this is definitely a good deal. At the full 49, I would say maybe it's it's a, a good deal at that price, but it just depends on your on your use case. If you can get a Xbox One controller for around that same price, then the Xbox One controller may be a little bit nicer. But this one is definitely more versatile. It definitely, if these paddle buttons, if that's a feature that you like, if you like the the triple uh, triple connection feature of having the 2.4 gigahertz also. That's definitely an added feature that is worth the price for you. Then this 50 bucks, it actually is a pretty good deal for having all that versatility in, in one device. So I'm pretty happy with it. So that is going to wrap it up for this review of this Bionic Vulcan controller. Very pleased with it. It'll go into my collection of controllers and it will get used probably most for, for that Android feature and for just portable, you know, if I'm going to go on a trip and I just want to take one controller with me that's going to work for my PC using that wire or that dongle and it's going to work for my tablet then this is going to be the controller that would get packed up with me so I'm happy with that thank you so much for watching this if you got something out of this if you enjoyed it if you learned something give me that like if you like this type of content you want to see more reviews of controllers and all kinds of other tech goodness then go ahead and hit that subscribe button doesn't cost a thing other than that, thanks as always for watching. Until next time, peace out and geek out.